Talking with Digital Enamel, and we have a special guest, Don Cornell from Jensen Dental. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, I've been absolutely intrigued with one of your products called Mio. It has a lot of um, buzz right now on social media, and a lot of people asking about it. Just why don't you give us the rundown of what Mio is? Uh, Mio was designed um, maybe about three years ago. People ask how long it took to really develop Mio and I tell them about 35 years to, <laughs> to uh, develop it and about one week to put it together. Good. <laughs> um, you know, but there was certainly a recognition of monolithic in dentistry and the growth of monolithic restorations. And as a ceramist for a very long time that was very focused on high-end aesthetics, um, seeing that, that monolithic coming, uh, I, we really needed to have something that would allow us to really create that kind of artistry in a monolithic format. So Mio is intended for just a straight zirconia restoration, uh, lithium disilicates, anything, and just something to make it look more three-dimensional without yep. stacking, right? Exactly. I mean, when you really look at it, 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 it any restoration, if you use, there's two components, there's Mio color and there's Mio structure, and even if you use both, you're going to be in less than uh, 0 0.2. Oh, wow. Uh, Most of the time around 0 0.1. And that's pretty amazing because the amount of depth that you can mm -hmm. get on top of this is really cool. In fact, you guys call it uh, uh, what you see is what you get, kind of in the computer yeah. lingo, but also color on top of color. Tell me about that. Yeah, so, I mean, in order to, as a ceramist, in order to create something and, and really understand what you're going to get when it comes out of the furnace, when we're layering ceramics, that's a, that's a skill set that's developed over years and years right. and years, yeah. you know, so... We wanted to develop something where as you're building your color and your characterization, you could see it and realize it and know that when you fire it, that's exactly how it's going to come out of the furnace. So developing a material that had exactly the same refractive index wet as, it, as the glass would be when it was fired was, was, was one of the keys. The other thing in terms of um, efficiency is we wanted to make sure that as you're doing your layering, you didn't have to layer it and then fire it and then come mm -hmm. back and add additional characterization. So the ability to float one color on top of another on top of another. It's crazy. And get it all done and create all the character you want in one day was, yeah. was, part, of the, uh, was part of the development. What I've really enjoyed about it is, and I've mixed tons of colors, and, and as soon as you put two colors next to each other, they start to blend. Yeah. And there's just no way around it. And with the Mio system, what I've noticed, even if you use the tiniest little brush or like a, a K file or an yep. Endo file, you can put it right next to it and put a stripe right next to it and they just are butted right yeah. on top of each other. So they, they absolutely don't blend unless you want to. So you have to like force them to blend. Yeah, you, you well, I wouldn't say force, well, but I mean, you know what I mean? gentle coercion. <laughs> Coer so you have to coerce them You can together. just take a little brush and, and you know, that's like a crack line is a perfect example. We'll put a crack line in, it's a straight white line. We'll go back with the brush and just move it around a little bit and create something that's more natural in appearance. Okay. You can blend wherever you want to, or you can leave it a harsh. The best thing about this for uh, CAD CAM doctors, for sure, is the fact that you can you can see the color go on. You can you know what it's going to look like after the fire because the biggest mystery has always been what fades away, what stays, what gets more chromatic afterwards, and it's been frustrating for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've also liked a lot is the uh, the glaze system. It's actually been very simple to use, and um, and you've, you've, you've made all of this work together. Yep. Yeah, so it's a, it's a very um, uh, high integrity ceramic material, and we started there first. We wanted something that was absolutely uh, no bubbling, super clear, um, very stable, and that was the basis for the entire line of materials, the glaze as well as, as the meat. So the, the three components of this is actually pretty cool, the glaze, the, um, the colors, and then the very unique one is the structure. And this is the one that I didn't understand at all, It's because it comes out really thick in the mm -hmm. in, out of the jar. It has a what is the what is the property called where you kind of squish it around and yeah it's it's called shear thinning shear thin right this yeah. is pretty amazing because it's it's familiar to dentists with what material yeah with like composites yeah it's not a composite it's still it's, ceramic it's, it's absolutely ceramic there's no composite component to it whatsoever you fire it in a ceramic furnace just like any other ceramic 
It's about, um, what's really unique is about 85% by volume ceramic material, which was really, really difficult to achieve, to, to create that very homogeneous mix. I mean, if you ever try to mix 85% of, you know, it's like doing dough, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's crazy. And so, so what is the, um, what are we using structure for actually? Um, the ceramics will typically use it to create surface texture. So mm -hmm. put it on in a very, very thin film. It does two, it has uh, two purposes. One is surface texture. You can alter um, some tooth form and create some topography that you, if you want. So, but primarily surface texture and scatter, scattering of light. When I, like I said, I'm new to this, but the few times that I've done it, it was actually pretty easy. And yeah. what, what I noticed after it fired it, you didn't have that gloss glaze no. finish. It's, it's shiny. But it's like enamel. It's like enamel. It's yeah. really pretty amazing. Can you show us how uh, you kind of like... Shear thin it? Yeah, <laughs> sure. This, this is crazy because I ruined the first few jars. I put all the diluting liquid in it thinking it was uh, it yeah, when dried you, out. Yeah, when you first look at it um, and you look at it inside the jar... It, it appears very dry and kind of chunky. It, you kind of see what it looks like there. Um, so when you when you want to use it, you just kind of gather it together on one side of the jar. And then as you would knead dough, um, you literally just start kneading it against the glass like that. And an amazing transformation takes place. It, it like, becomes very it like pliable. Loose, yeah, it loosens up. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, it sure thins, yeah. and uh, that's a very unique property of, uh, of this material. And once you get it to that state, then you can take it out, flatten it on your palette, and pick it up with a brush and put it on and shape it and do whatever you want with it. Yeah, and you can get it down to like what kind of thickness oh, of less, layer? Oh, less than uh, 0 0.1. Yeah. Less than 0 0.1. So again, I'm still an amateur at all this. Uh, you lay down the, the colors, and you can get like a mamelons and translucent effect, and then you mm -hmm. fire that, and then this is a second fire on top of it. It's a first. second fire, yeah. Um, you have to because of the viscosity of this and the flowability of the yeah. You colors, push all that around. You push it all around. Yeah. So you you set you set fire that, and then you come back and you apply the a thin skin over the surface. And again, if you want to change the shape, add some surface topography. What, uh, add a contact. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're missing a contact, you can do all of that. And then when you've got the shape you like, um, you can use a, a variety of different brushes. You can, you know, you've got three different brushes here in the Mio system, which were specifically designed for that. We've got this. This uh, is awesome. Got what do you call fan, that one? It's just a fan brush. I, somebody called it a peacock brush. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, I didn't think of that one, but. So you can see when you look at it this way, it's it's just literally almost a single row of hairs this yeah. way. Um, but it, you've got this beautiful fan shape and you can drag it across the surface. Um, you can use parts of it and you can create just unbelievable paracamata and, you know, other textures with it. Yeah. So on your website, you do a lot of videos and everything yep. that go over all that. Tell us about that. Uh, so, you know, one, one issue with Mio is it, it looks like a stain. We say it, you know, looks like a duck, quacks like a duck and walks like a duck. People think, well, it must be a duck. And then they don't really... If they treat it like a stain, they don't realize the full potential of the material. Like, um, as I mentioned, what you see is what you get and floating color on color. Um, you'll also notice this material, wherever you put it, it stays there. It doesn't move on you. It doesn't, doesn't run. We have to down, literally, literally unlearn what we've learned. You have to unlearn everything that, um, that you know about stain. And when you look at it, you go, well, it's just another stain. And people go, oh, I, I know how to use a stain. And they, and they struggle with it. Yeah. And they, well, I can't get the results that you did. And then you show them, um, you know, dab and drag, or you show them some of the other techniques for building color on color and the light goes off, you know, yeah. and they're like, wow. And then you, they make their first crown and they're just stunned. Yeah, you know, it's like it's a it's a revelation for them. So. Yeah. So where can they uh, where can they buy this? Where can they learn about where can they learn um, more about it? Yeah, it's a Jensen Dental product, and Jensen uh, Dental has uh, certainly can buy it from from Jensen. Uh, any sales rep at Jensen or call uh, Jensen directly. Um, and there's once you become a Mio user, there's a password protected library of all kinds yeah. of of educational tools. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, pretty exciting. I mean, we, there's always the cool things that happen in digital dentistry, but uh, I, I've always said that it's about what you leave behind. And so, you know, the, the process, the digital process is always cool and new ways to do things and everything, but literally something like this, I think, is revolutionary. So, oh, thank you. Don, thanks so much for oh, coming in you. Digital Enamel and showing us My Mio, pleasure. and uh, we'll be glad to have you back and show us a little bit more. My pleasure. Thank thanks. you. Okay.